thought we had a deal. We do have a deal. Promise? He's weird. He's misunderstood. He's totally cute. Like James Dean. Every evening, I play catch with my dead brother. Today is the day. Learn how to throw a slider. Yo, so Boy, that is some oh, power yeah. that that Charlie St. Cloud has there. He sees ghosts when his he he. He's oh, so, so he's like Jennifer Love Hewitt, or or Michael J. Fox in The Frighteners. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, or or, or, or Mark Ruffalo, Mark Ruffalo, Arquette, but... Mark Ruffalo in in uh, Just Like Heaven. Oh, oh that or, really, or, oh, that w- really weird looking kid in The Sixth Sense. Yeah. 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 Or one <laughs> bum down the street. Yeah. Oh, I'm buddy. Nobody's there. Yeah. Hey, pal, how you doing? Don't <laughs> sit here, my favorite, my friend here. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, no, Charlie. Charlie's a typical teenager, right? He wants to go out and have fun. His mom is a single mom. Tells him, "Hey, look, you're the oldest. You got to watch your little brother here, little Saint Cloud." <laughs> and uh, he's like, "Oh, my! You know, I want to go out and do some things that an 18 year old horny kid does." And she's like, "No, nah, I got to cook dinner for him." So he stays at home with the kid and decides, like, "All right, you know what? I'm gonna go out and you know you can come with me, kid. I'm gonna drop you off somewhere. I know where this kid wants to go." <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's a child molest down the street. I'm sure yeah, he'll yeah. take care of you. Take care of you. Take care of me real good. And it, hey, just his luck, man. Takes this kid out on the night when he's told not to go anywhere sneaks the car away they're playing grab ass in the car and a drunk driver comes behind them hits them pushes them into the middle of an intersection where they get hit by a bigger truck now how the hell uh, charlie st cloud survived this i don't know because it was a semi truck that hit both of them but he yeah. lives but too bad the little little brother was on the passenger oh, wait, side whoa, 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 whoa. now from what i've been seeing from this trailer it may look like charlie was drunk and and then that's why he felt all this guilt. No, no, no. they make a big point of showing that like it was totally not his fault. But even so, he you know I mean come on, his eighteen year old kid, his little brother dies, he wasn't even supposed to go out. He's still feeling a lot of guilt. But it's more than just that that's keeping him from not moving forward in his life. Yeah, yeah. He died in that ambulance himself for a few minutes before even more haggard than I thought possible looking Ray Liotta yeah. as a paramedic. <laughs> Dude, I saw Ray Liotta on, on the Hannah Montana show the other day. And I yeah. was like, fuck. Uh, yeah, this is yeah. terrible. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. You, you mean like yeah. he, he, and it wasn't a cameo. It wasn't like Look, it's Ray Liotta playing Ray Liotta. He's playing the principal. Oh, he yeah. didn't play a monster or something? Yeah. Like, a like, shambling like, pile yeah. protoplasm. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> Bean, Bean, like, like he walks into the room, all the girls scream. <laughs> Being brought back by Ray Liotta. <laughs> that could be a terrifying feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you look at Ray Liotta and you're like, oh, fuck, am I dead? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's a bear. <laughs> <laughs> From hell. Yeah, no, Ray Liotta brings him back, but he can't bring little Sam. That's but a little he brother. doesn't come back by nah, himself. Didn't make, but <laughs> Which would have been a cool move. Movie if like that was the announcer voiceover in the trailer, but he didn't come back alone. Because well, but instead, yeah. well he wouldn't. He doesn't. You get a back. Hallmark card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I killed you. <laughs> um, no, he he no yeah his brother's dead. But before he died, he told his brother he made a, a promise. He says. All right, until I have to go to school because he gets accepted. Where did he get accepted to? Uh, Yale, I think. Pretty oh, sure oh, Yale. Oh, Yale was it Yale? Yeah. Damn, that Charlie was smart. Well, they made a point saying he got he got accepted though on a uh, on a sailing scholarship. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. no. You know, I'm sure the people at Yale were like, yeah. "Wow, we still have one of these." I know. Uh, I was about to say only at Yale. <laughs> yeah, you talk about a setup for like the purest, whitest kid in America. <laughs> Everything's going great for him. You know, he, he's got he gets the scholarship. He big things are about to happen. Everyone in the whole town knows that this guy's gonna grow up to be a legend yeah this pretty much happens to him. <laughs> I know. And like, well there's one black guy in this whole town yeah. and he's a dick who wears izod shirts yeah. yeah he's the only black guy in yeah. town who just happens to be the biggest dick yeah. in town yeah. too yeah. he dresses hey. whiter than any white person in that town yeah no <laughs> even even for the 80s it would have been too white yeah. like, hey, what, pink izod dude if, what the fuck if you like the one black guy in a little country bumfuck white town of course you'd be a dick <laughs> well, at least you'd be pissed off all the time I know, yeah, no, he like he, they they didn't cut back to all the times he was called nigger. <laughs> <laughs> if, hey, you know, if he didn't wear a hat and he had any shoes on, he looked like an ice cream sandwich with strawberry ice cream in the middle. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> but no, before, we'll get into that a little bit later. But yeah, he's about to head off to Yale for on his his big you know sailing scholarship. He can sail the world and, by and, sailing. And, and he, he tells the, his little the, brother, the, the Michael McDonald scholarship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Christopher. That's Wayne. Christopher Cross. Oh, but, but, yeah. but, I can't tell all these white songs. But, I know. But, I can't tell yeah, Yacht Rock. But, but, yacht Rock. <laughs> they all sound alike. But he, yeah, he tells his little brother. He told him before he killed him. He's like, I'm going to take you out every day until I have to go to uh, Yale, and I'm going to play catch with you. I'm going to make you a big baseball star, kid. No, he's, he, I'm sure what he said was like, I'm going to take you out every day for the rest of your life. Oops. <laughs> yeah. well, if he had said that, yeah. we wouldn't have gotten a movie. Yeah. <laughs> what he did say is, until I leave for school, which, yeah. you know, as the movie shows us shortly after the, the accident, is five years later, and he's going to that spot in the woods they agreed to meet every day at the same time, right about dusk, to play catch with the ghost of his brother, which isn't all like, oh, it just looks like a little kid who wants yeah. to play yeah. and, and the worst yeah. thing about it is he becomes a caretaker to the cemetery. That yeah. his brother's buried. In. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. It, it's funny, I, and you get the feeling that he kind of took this so he could be close to the grave of his little brother because he's that messed up. I mean, that, yeah, yeah. He's. I mean, yeah. He's. The, you, you really it, the cool thing about the movie at the beginning is that you don't know if this kid is a ghost or you. You don't know if Charlie just is fucked up. You want me to go? No. Then why did you bring her? I didn't mean to spy on you. Charlie, it's okay. We can't lose Sam, Tess. We can't lose Sam. Let's go. No. Let's go. The more I'm in your world, the less I can be in his. Charlie, at some point, we all have to let go. I can't lose Sam, Tess. Bye, Tess. Well, yeah, this is the thing. Sounds it's a first, like but then you're like, like other people see him talking to someone, and it's like no one's there. And no one's he's there. He's just talking to him. So is he crazy? And it's not just the kid. At one point, he sees like early on, he's like one of his friends who had left to go join the military, and you're like, oh, he's talking to his friend in the cemetery. Go visit another friend, but no, his friend is dead too. Bah, and you're like, the- wow, do not be friends with Zach Efron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and the thing is, is that there's a gaggle of of geese like that are ghost geese that he <laughs> chased you know, off the. You did there. kind of wonder about that because there's, there's, there's they're all undead geese. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, it's it. it it's all it, it, now. It's kind of intriguing this part. I mean, it, 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 that the beginning after the wreck and everything, and were you wondering if he's crazy or not? And then it gets really sappy when he has to go and fulfill this promise to his dead brother by going out into the woods and playing catch with him every day for five years. And wait, I, who throws the ball back? Well, no, you see him like as yeah. if he was really there. I mean, as if he was just playing catch with a kid. Yeah. Because, like, I, you know, as much as you see that, you see that two minutes or so in the film where townspeople are like, oh, that guy's crazy. But the film itself never questions his sanity. Yeah. The film l- wears it on its sleeve. No, no, that's really a ghost of his dead brother. Yeah, you, you, okay. you are, okay. you are told to just watch with this it. through the eyes of Zach Efron's character, Charlie. Yeah. And so, through his eyes, it's very real. In, this ghost is I'm so sure real. I'm sure the movie wants you to accept it right off the bat. I never well, got the movie asking the audience to question whether I, or not he was saying. I, I, I mean, go ahead. Well, the thing is with that, the way the movie is shot, it, it honestly, that first like uh, 30 minutes or so, especially when you see like he's working at the at the graveyard, it, it, there's a lot of shots that make you think, okay, now is this where you you, you can almost feel like there's going to be some really big twist at the end of the movie. Yeah. Because a lot of just the average normal everyday shots almost seem somewhat like fantasy based, like it's somewhat surreal, and some of the way some of it is shot. It's very which ethereal. Made, yeah, it makes it makes you really wonder, like, okay, is everything that the, these people, the director, is showing me right now, is this? Is there any semblance of this being real? I mean, yeah, you don't know. Yeah, it, it really the movie makes you question a lot, and that's a good point. I didn't even think about that yeah. because I was just thinking, then it looks like CG. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a scene at the beginning before anybody dies. Mm-hmm. Charlie's looking out in the sunset, and his little brother Sam's like, "Where are they going, Charlie?" And he's like, yeah. "Fuck, they're going home." What the fuck are they going? <laughs> <laughs> but they, yeah. but the, I guess he's asking that because it looks so magical that they're going it off does. to the horizon, and it's and it's all yeah. CG. It looks it, like a yeah. cartoon almost. And you yeah. see Frodo like waving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I got from that wasn't that it was fantasy. They wanted to establish that 
Zach Efron's got big dreams for the future. And that's all I got out of that scene was that they wanted to establish just like the scenes where you see him talking to nobody. We're just supposed to establish that the townspeople think he's crazy, but I really, I'm totally hundred percent on that. I think that you were, they never wanted us to think as an audience that that ghost wasn't really appearing. That must be a a pretty, that's just that. That's from the uh, subjective view of the, of the movie because, yeah. uh, yeah, because I, I was looking at it and I was thinking, Man, I'm intrigued by this because there's so many things that I don't know what's happening. I want to know if there's going to be a yeah. twist. And the thing that threw it off, even when I thought that there still might be something deeper here, it gets really, really sappy with him playing his brother. It's the music that's playing. It's that same sappy music we hear all the time. The lines are really bad because they are, and and I have to give it to them. They do try to make them seem like little, like real brothers for a little while. They hit each other. They they kind of get. There's moments where he's they, they get on each other's nerves, but it's never enough to overcome. How much he loves his little brother. Yeah, I, you, you get the feeling like if this was real life, he, the last words he would have had to his brother like, "Fuck you! I didn't want to really be bothered with you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was about to get laid, kid, and then yeah. crash." He's like, "Oh <laughs> shit!" What and it's, there is some <laughs> sense of guilt that he had to like really live with, which you know it's kind of hinted at uh, with, with involving the accident. But they don't really it, it, they don't really give they don't really force it. Uh, well. Not force is the wrong word. They really don't show it enough to where you feel like, man, I feel bad for this kid because he has to live with this for the rest of his life. But it seems like, you know, in the beginning of the movie, like you're introduced to his mom. Uh, yeah, who's played pulling. by Kim, Pas- Kim Basinger. Yeah, which who only had I'm five minutes to spare. I was like, man, I haven't seen where the hell has she been? You know? Yeah, it was, was she real or not? <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> but, uh, but the thing is, is like, you know, they uh, they set up the scene involving the mom, like telling, yeah, Zach Efron's character, to, like, you know, hey, watch over, watch over your brother. So you think after the accident, there'd be some kind of weird tension between him and his mother, but his mother completely disappears. She's out it, the movie, it, man. She's completely Are you out serious? Because that's yeah. probably like the most important relationship. Like right after the wreck, the, yeah. the person who would be the one to say, like, look, even though you didn't do what I said, yeah. I, you know, it, it don't don't take this on yourself. Have you ever you've, of course, heard the term someone's just phoning in a performance? Yeah. Well, her next appearance and only other appearance in the film literally. is literally a phone call. Wow. Yeah. Where you don't yeah. even see her. You just hear I her mean, voice on the phone. And, and, and yeah. it's the thing. Like you said, yeah, wa- watching the trailer. I've never seen the trailers, but watching the trailer, if they really like show that relationship between the family, it's completely lost in the movie, which I thought kind of made the movie suffer. Okay, uh, and let, let me tell you this. From watching the trailer, it, it looks like Zac Efron, um, yeah, he was going to had big dreams, but he was drunk driving, got in a wreck, his brother got killed, and so he talks to the ghost, and then his brother's ghost is telling him, like, all right, that's enough playing with me. You need to go get that girl and go tap that ass. <laughs> I know. It's like, you like, well, who, who, yeah, they know that trailer fucked up. Really? I mean, yeah. It's not yeah. all that different from it, though. I mean, yeah, there's differences, but they don't really play out in an important way, those differences on the whole. I mean, you got the gist of it with the exception of one totally hysterical twist that had me laughing for oh, 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, in a good way. Well, no, let, me, let me just say yeah, this. Laughing at it, not yeah. with it. Let me, let me just say this. Uh, Char- Charlie's power to see people's ghosts is so powerful that he will fuck your ghost before you even die. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, that's all I will say. I don't want to yeah. ruin it for anybody, but yeah. people are scratching their heads right now. What does that mean? Well, you, if you see this movie, you know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. It's, it's a weird thing in this movie where you just like, now wait a minute. If you And I don't even think they thought this through themselves. It's yeah. like, if you go back and they add this didn't. all together, that means he was probably fucking the ground at this point. It, <laughs> did, it didn't, well, you know what I mean? They, they established early on just like you said yourself leon with the catch that they have a physical effect on the world at least around him that ghosts are more solid whatever can affect the world around him by nature <laughs> of his and so is zach efron by the nature of his beautiful blue eyes <laughs> well you know they're yeah. trying here the audience are going for is they want to get the combination between you know that notebook audience for those sort of super sappy hallmark with the twist films and the twilight audiences that supernatural tween audience wow. and it doesn't really merge at all i mean i was telling Corey, there are so many points in this film and the way it's filmed that a soundtrack change would have totally made this a completely different movie and maybe even kind of a cool one. Oh yeah, yeah right. the, the scene where Charlie is r- running through the graveyard with a light, with one of those old grave digger lights, he's yeah. looking yeah. around. And, uh, and what's the what's the girl's name? Let me look at this. Amanda Crew is the is the love interest in this. It's a girl that he went to high school with. They didn't really really know each other that well. Yeah, so she's like the later on version of uh, Jessica Biel. Yeah, yeah, she was. Yeah. yeah, she's got kind of a long head, but she's still hot. She was she was in. 
what was that that road trip movie? The one that we really like? Sex Drive. Sex, Sex Drive. Drive. Yeah, that was a chick from that. I thought, yeah, I thought she's she's beautiful, man. But yeah, he's she's he's, hot. he's 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 trying to court her, and she's like, "Come and find me." And he's going to the graveyard with a light, and they're playing a do 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 do. You, but you're right. If they had changed it to dun dun dun, it was happy sappy <laughs> music, but it's filmed yeah. like a Ooh. horror movie. Man, it's, it's, I was I was waiting for Ozzy Osbourne to pop up. He's but you know, the, black at that movie. Well, well, even that, even then, like, watching like, it, there's lots of scenes in this movie that like you think, okay, try and imagine this with a different soundtrack, and you're like, wow, I think the director wasn't told what this movie was about. I oh think yeah, he thought he was making I know what you did last summer or something, and yeah, they just re soundtracked it after. There, the there should have been a Thurman playing. You're like. Ooh. Oh, okay. and, and, and even, I, I, and even I, I, the chick that he runs to, she's like all in shadow when he's running all up to her. You expected him to put that light in her face, and she'd have fangs. And like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you made an excellent point, I think, when you said that there were some moments for real drama here. Like when uh, Kim Basinger leaves a movie. Yeah. Man, it's like that tension that Don't we you got. want to explore that? Yeah, at the, at the funeral, <laughs> when they're looking at each other, you're thinking, like, shh, is she mad about yeah, because, this? Because the whole audience. No son of mine. <laughs> you fucked up. You, yeah, you <laughs> should be you in that grave. Yeah, you should have been you. She kicks him in the balls and throws him in. <laughs> <laughs> my baby. She turns to a black actor. My baby. I there's have some, no son. There's so many missed opportunities in here, though, to do things more interesting than what they chose to do. I mean, even just with the fact they establish, you know, that he can see other ghosts and not just, you know, his brother. Really? You don't want to do more with that? You don't want to take that more? Yeah. Like, he's not even interested in doing more with <laughs> well, that? You know what? But, but like you said, you, it's funny. I was laughing when you said in the theater. It's like, oh, God, they're, they're ripping off Cemetery Man. I'm like, yeah, this is like Disney's version of Cemetery Man, except <laughs> except there's no hot chick with big tits, you know, in, in the movie. Yeah, um, it would have been and, an but, improvement. But they, it, would have, it would have made it for an interesting film to really explore a lot of the ideas that they were throwing out at you. And they, they you're like, really shouldn't this be kind of scary? Yeah, and they really did, and you know, and it comes to a conclusion to where you know it's like, it's like the writers thought, okay, now we gotta let's let's just wrap this up, and that's how it felt. It felt a bit rushed at the end, and and yeah. it just became predictable, and you're just like, yeah, eh, it's I, too bad. I I don't want to see because I I don't want to like say that this movie should have done this and done that because it's based on a novel. I was looking this up. It's uh, based on a novel by a guy named Ben Sherwood. It was written. Not too long ago, two thousand. But you'll probably find it in that glossy yeah. cover section of if you like Twilight. Yeah, your local yeah. And you'll store. love Charlie Saint Cloud. Yeah. No, it it was it was written yeah two thousand four, and I don't know how close this is to the book, but the the author obviously is very close to the book, meant to take it a different direction. I'm just saying with the movie, you it looks like you're being steered in a direction that's actually better than the direction that they take. Yeah. It, instead of going because Leon, you were talking about from that trailer, it looks like. He's having to deal with his bro- his brother's ghost telling him, look, why don't you go somewhere? It's almost like, you know, you need to give it that girl. Hey, Charlie, you, you got a heart, old man. <laughs> You're playing right. catch with me. Yeah, you need he, to go up to this going, girl. He's going, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I can't leave you. He but, but then it, there comes the big storm, and he's like, wait. I'm the only one who can save her because I am the prince of Atlantis, and it, yeah. it's time to reclaim my throne. You know, like that ghost kid, like not only throwing the ball back at him, but starts throwing rocks and she can, yeah. Get out of here, Charlie! Yeah. Fuck, man! I need to go. I can't get to heaven because you keep fucking with me. Yeah, but, didn't that occur to you? You were like, "Wow, it's been like five years, and no one's going. To, there's not the requisite speech for someone to tell Charlie." Has ever occurred to you that maybe the only reason he keeps showing up is because of your lame emo ass won't yeah. let him yeah. go? I thought, but you know what? After five years, like hanging out playing ball I, I was like where's the rest of the team I mean I, I was I mean Yoda and fucking Bill, Obi-Wan Kenobi should have showed up and you know and fucking Yoda should go mm, yeah a strike it is like yeah yeah Yellow, that's a foul ball <laughs> I, that, that, that kid probably didn't have enough midichlorians to join it <laughs> that's right that's right well I don't know he did show up as a ghost after the fact that only happens to Jedi usually yeah, <laughs> yeah. the kid's name is Charlie Tahan or Tahan he kind of looks like the young uh, Anakin, Anakin Skywalker yeah, yeah he, he did kind of like, like just grew up just a little he bit acted a lot better than him though. Oh, yes, yeah. he did. When as whiny. And you, can, I, can I say something real quick about uh, before we? Because I, I want to let everyone know. Um, as far as the acting, I thought the acting was actually really great. That was just what I was going to yeah. say. Zach was Efron that, is actually a talented kid. I mean, you, you want to hate him because he's a pretty boy, but he usually picks good projects. And I he, mean, with Hairspray and, and Orson and me. He maybe. shows how good he is in this movie. He is getting a chance to really sh- to stretch some. The only problem is is that it gets to a point that is a little cloying. You're like, oh, Jesus Christ, stop whining already. I mean, yeah, you do it convincingly. Hell, you're fucking great at it. But I'm at this point, I just want to smack the shit out of your character. Well, yeah, the character, because I have to say, I, I'm, I, I, 
I have wanted to hate Zac Efron more than anybody <laughs> because he is a pretty boy and he's got those fucking high school it's musical movies. It's an and, alpha dog <laughs> issue. I, I, know. I, thought, I, thought, I thought you were going to say he has those beautiful eyes. Those beautiful eyes. I want to check him up in the corner just like, you know what? I used to be you. <laughs> you, you know what? It's funny. I want, y'all, I want y'all to catch me like hunched over Zac Efron one day. I turn around. I got his eyeballs in my eyes. <laughs> he's got no eyeballs in his sockets. <laughs> it's like Thriller. <laughs> so I got Zac Efron eyes. But no, he's... Ah, <laughs> yeah. ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I'll be picking up chicks now, guys. Whoa, yeah. Yeah. Fuck, dude? Yeah, I'm, I'm picking up chicks now. What and I'm doing, <laughs> and then I turn around, bump into the wall. <laughs> Whoops! But no, he's uh, Zach Efron, man. I just can't help but think that this guy's gonna be really the next big thing, man. Maybe you know, I, 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 for some reason I keep thinking this guy could be like another Brad Pitt. Yeah, I mean, honestly, or Leo DiCaprio. I yeah. don't know and if I'm I, willing yeah. to go that far yet, but I will say that anybody's giving him shit just because he's the pretty boy. He was in some Disney stuff starting out, which, by the way, everybody is these days oh, yeah. that's you're you're barking up the wrong tree you got to give this guy a chance because he is not a bad actor at all he's better than most of the people his age he, you know yeah. and that's true and the thing is it's a kind of sad fact about it is that uh the last movie that i saw him in i, I actually thought he he did a decent job what was he, it 17 again 17 again I, was, yeah. I thought he was great in that yeah movie. yeah i thought i was like he wow, was the only thing that kept me you're right. he was the only thing that made me like the movie yeah, but that as was, far as playing an adult i mean where he was being an adult character yeah. but in a 17 year old body i mean he did a great job and but the sad fact is is that when i found out about this movie which is like earlier today somebody told me I didn't even know who was in it somebody said Zac Efron all I said was oh fuck you kidding me yeah, right, right that's, yeah. the, that's that that that. natural fuck. first reaction well because you assume and then, and then I'm like wait uh, he's not that bad it's not even so much that he's bad it's that some of the movies he's were, were, have been in were definitely not targeted for you and you're like great here's another movie that's is not meant me buddy <laughs> yeah no, what's her God, name yeah, Hutchison Vanessa, can we Vanessa, save that soundbite can we save that and use that yeah, over yeah. and over again until oh, he we will. I'll, I'll, I'll keep, it, I'll that, keep the Vanessa Hutchison yeah. part out of it. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that could be my Spider-Man 3. All right? <laughs> but, you know what? I think I'll with this one... I'll say Vanessa Hudgens. Dude. I think with this one, it's kind of the same thing as 17 again, where you're like, you know what? Without Zach, this would have been almost intolerable. I yeah. really do think... I mean, the cinematography is nice, mm-hmm. but that's not enough for, you know, a movie that is this insipid. And it really is pretty insipid. And and you said you weren't, you didn't think it was predictable. And I admit, I saw the trailer first, which gave away a lot of the plot. But I kept thinking about that. I was watching it. I was like, you know what? I'm pretty sure I could have called almost everything that ha- that's happening in this movie, with the exception of the, the ghost sex. But yeah, sex. no. It, yeah, 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 y'all start talking. Over- well, only because it was so fucking ridiculous that you're like, that doesn't even make sense. No, it All didn't. Right. I mean, we looked at each other right when it happened. And we thought the same. Like, wait a minute. Wouldn't it be... Oh, whatever. <laughs> I, I still say that this movie would make a hundred times as much money if they changed the title to I Fuck Ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what ghost you fucked last summer. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> That's a good one. Uh, so, well, they got the DVD name for this. <laughs> they released it in Mexico. Um, I Fuck the Spitter to or whatever. I don't know. Man, I, well, before I get to I don't even mind how they speak Spanish. You know what? It makes about as much sense as this movie. Yeah, I Fuck O Espirito. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just had an O. Yeah, that would be the movie. Yeah. Fuck yeah, O. Just, just, just throw a, a Koopa uh, Chupacabra, Koopa in, this Chupacabra in there. Just add an O or an A to the end of any word, <laughs> and you're speaking a foreign language. That's a, that's a fact, actually. So it's that cool F roll. But, man, I, before we give our ratings here, I, I will agree with you on the predictable part because the, another turn that the movie took after the, the romance in here which instead of going into a, another story that we thought could have been deeper and more dramatic, they go into the typical romance. And once that takes a turn where you think like, oh, man, that's OK. Now they're doing something cool with the romance here, too. They go into this action climax that you can see coming from a long way off and from the middle of the movie. And you're thinking at that point, I hope they don't do that. Yeah. And they do. But <sighs> Zach Efron is really good in this, carries the movie. I liked watching him movie wasn't terrible because of all the ways that I thought it could have gone. Even if it didn't go in the direction I wanted to, it did have me wondering for a while. So it's enough for me to give it a rental. Corey and Zach sitting in a tree. <laughs> K-I-S-S. Come on, man. You know somebody else is going to do it in the forum. Hey, I'm just getting it out of the way now. And you know what? He's rich. He can <laughs> take care of me. <laughs> like no <laughs> woman could. <laughs> Corey, Zach, you, you, Corey keep, you keep Zach uh, You keep Zach occupied while I take care of his other woman. Uh, the, <laughs> Vanessa, I'm coming, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, Corey's presenting. No. I, I, you know what? I, I agree with you. Um, this is... 
it's not totally awful, and that's mainly because Zach really does. He's earnest about it. He really wants this to be a good movie, and you keep hoping during it because you're like, there's enough interesting elements that this could be cool. It just never pans out. It never turns in any more than, say, a Halloween themed movie on the Hallmark Channel, yeah. and that's about as good as it is. I mean, it's a rental, honestly. Yeah. Oh, you didn't see it. I, I was yeah. looking at him too, like, dummy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, yeah, I, I liked it enough to where, yeah, uh, Zach Efron does carry this movie. Um, there, uh, the, the way the director was, was at least shooting a lot of the scenes made me really think, okay, this, this could possibly be something else. And everything that I thought would have made a far more interesting movie instead of the, you know, instead of it becoming the predictable movie that I, I was hoping it wouldn't be. But, uh, you know, despite all those criticisms, uh, I, I honestly really, I, I, I kind of enjoyed it. Uh, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a matinee. Wow. Uh, only because, wow. yeah, I mean, it did, it did hold my interest for, for a while, uh, and, until it got to that point, that, that, that point where you're just like, okay, I can see this, where this is going, and it did. Um, but other than that, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I actually surprisingly enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, you know, when they, speaking of different turns, after it said five years later, and Charlie went out into the woods, I wanted him to go out there and throw the ball into a bush, and then you see this corpse comes out. <laughs> this little bro- <laughs> yeah. Time to play catch Charlie. Yeah, where's all, Time the, to play catch Charlie. Where's all the jokes where he's reaching the bush and then the ghost hand that's all gray comes yeah. out and grabs his hand? Yeah. Well, if they'd had yeah. at least a little bit of that, I would have maybe given it a high rental. Yeah. Trust your heart, Charlie St. Cloud. This is why I was given a second chance. We'll always be brothers. <laughs>